Drake Toll and Katie Pickell for the Blonde Boys Power Hour. Welcome back into the Petty Clinic Low T Bears Dan. Happy Tuesday, folks. It's parade day. Mm. How about it? There's gonna be a parade in the streets, a party in the streets. Is it gonna come by here? Do we know? I think uh Is it coming you know by what? This let way? me give them a call. Let me give uh, let me give those guys a call. And they probably right, right right here, right? Okay. Right right down Elm. 101 Elm? Yeah. <laughs> Austin Avenue, 14th to 3rd Street. So that's a no um, on live guests during it, the sh- it during is a, the parade. Yeah, yeah, parade. Yeah, live guests during the parade probably hmm. not going to happen. We'll are talk you to David. go to the parade? We guy? could ask David K. I am. I'm going to go to the parade. You're going to go to the parade. I'm going to be a parade Good guy. Deal. Yeah, are you Good going? Deal. I am going to We should carpool now that we're I'm neighbors. I'm in. I'm in. We should be in the parade. You want to just are, walk you know, at the back? Since you moved into the house like a house away from me, we have not seen each other one time. I know. I know. It's been dark. It's not been dark. walking in, not walking out. I know. That's, nothing. We're going to break the streak, though. I got a good feeling. This is the week. This is the week. We're going to watch the, the we're gonna watch that documentary together. We're going to watch the race together. I'm, I'm ready. ready to do yeah, it, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. And then we'll make a documentary after that. <laughs> Um, okay, so one of the things that I that I saw this morning, and it was a big part of Armstrong's minute today, is the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. You're currently looking at nearly, if not more than, I think it's up to more than, 2,000 players in the transfer portal. Matthew Postens was telling us about it yesterday, the amount of, of players that are in the portal right now. Yeah. I, I okay, I get it, right? Especially in a COVID year, you're going to have a lot of guys that transfer out and want to have a new change of, a change of scenery. I want to go from Charleston Southern to Virginia and play for a better team. Mm-hmm. But 2,000, no regulation. It's unbelievable. And I think that is the classic, most classic example we can see of human nature being the grass is greener. Like even if, it's, even if the slightest thing is wrong in your program or you don't feel like you're playing enough, you want to get more NBA looks, like if you have just even the most slight reason to leave and to go to what you would think is a better situation, you are now fully equipped to do that. And so that's why we're seeing so many kids in the portal because you're 18, 19 years old, everyone in your – family is telling you, hey, you can go make a whole lot of money pro. Why don't you do that? And this team is going to help you do that. That team's going to help you do that. So uh, I think we're seeing selfishness really rear its ugly head, unfortunately. But uh, the, the worst part about this is there's leaving. There's going to be so many kids without a spot. Kids are going to go into the oh, portal yeah. and, and be just, I mean, that's going to be it. That's going to be their career. Like unless you average 17 points in the Horizon League, you know, yeah. you're, you're going to have to be like, oh, I was all first team, all conference in the Horizon League, had 17 points and eight eight assists. Like, all right. One million percent. You've probably got a power five spot left for you. Mm-hmm. But if you are in the Horizon League and you averaged six points for your team, came off the bench and had two assists and a, and a board, where, where are you going to go? I know every single kid that I went to school with thought they could have played at a bigger school. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's an exception. I don't think that's like... In out, I don't think like that's like an uncommon case. Every, everyone at a guys. smaller school, when you're junior, senior year, you think you've developed enough. You're comparing yourself with every other person that's at that stage of life with you. You're like, hey, I, could, I could do what they're doing. You can't. You you, you can't. If you could have, you would have been recruited out of high school. There's very rare cases like guys like Drew Estrada with football, different sport, but we're seeing the same thing in that transfer portal. You, what you have is what you're working with for the duration of your college career because everybody else is developing at the same pace, typically. Mm. Mm. How about this? Uh, so, like, since we started this conversation, seven more people. I entered the transfer portal. No. I have officially entered the transfer really? portal. Really? Congrats. Yeah, I'm exploring my options Congratulations. Right yeah. Let's you just go. don't know. Let's go. A Michigan State's Thomas Kithier, he just entered the transfer portal. I was in the portal a year ago. You were in the portal. I was in the portal. You were True in the portal, story. too. Very easy to do. You just say, I'd like to be, you'd say one portal, please. And they say, okay. <laughs> you just. Very easy. I have four years of eligibility left. You actually do. In every collegiate sport. You truthfully very much do. I could enter the transfer portal right now. Get your doctorate. Drake Toll in the transfer portal. You heard it here first and up tempo. I, I would have much of a, as much of a shot at playing Division One college basketball as some of these guys of that these have guys. entered the some transfer of these guys, portal man. right now. Some of these guys. Texas A&M Aggie forward Jonathan Aku is in the transfer portal. He made 10 starts last season, which they only played like 11 games. Uh-huh. So, I mean, hats off to that guy. So, the, the portal is continually loading up. There's a rule they made today. A rule. I say a rule. The AAC clarified their transfer rule. Their transfer policy used to be you could not transfer from one school to the other in the AAC. So okay. that would be from Memphis to SMU, Got it. SMU to Houston or Eastern Carolina. Uh, and now that rule is off the table. They now are going to allow transfers across the conference, intra-conference transfers. Is that a one-year thing with COVID or that's, that's just that's period. open they season? They have eliminated their intra-conference transfer policy. Can coaches block that? 
No. Really? I mean, you can't. Like, if Bob Bowlesby comes out and says, I'm Bob Bowlesby, the commissioner of the Big 12, and I say this, the coaches can't be like, no, veto. Really? No power. Interesting. Because no there's, there's a lot going on right now at Oklahoma with Rink, Lincoln Riley and uh, right. one of his quarterbacks. So Chandler that's a, Morris. That's a big deal. So Chandler Morris, whose dad, Chad, is now the head coach at Allen High School. Yeah. That's here and there. Yeah. Um, he transfers from Oklahoma to TCU. Right. And he wanted and to. <laughs> Lincoln Riley was like, no, no, you can't yeah. do that. You can't transfer from conference team to conference team. We're not about to play against you. Right. And Which, you know our playbook. Right. This is his third school mm -hmm. now in three years for Chandler Morris. And will he see the field? He saw it a little bit for Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but then the, the question arises with, with the prominence of the transfer portal right now, should guys be able to go from school to school within their own conference? I think. Yes. Without penalty. Without penalty. Yes, with the caveat of you have a coaching change. Because I think it is very much dirty when a coach will sign a kid on that Tuesday, whatever it is, that Thursday or Wednesday, he's taking a job. I had a good friend of mine committed to UCLA the next day. The linebacking coach, which he had committed to play for, is gone. And he's like, well, I just signed this piece of paper that legally binds me to be at your school for the next, at least the next year. And so for a coach to have the flexibility to get out of Dodge and for a player not to... I have an issue with that because these are the kids that, I mean, it's their livelihood too. It's these kids that are trying to get an education and potentially play professional sports. So I think the caveat would be if your coach leaves, let's open up and have a flexible conversation. Let's have some common sense and reason with these kids that, hey, this isn't what I signed up for. So let's talk about it. Who regulates that? Who at the NCAA has got to be like, okay, your coach left. Uh, all right. Because there's, there's a yeah, guy, there's right. a guy that I, I call, hey, worst case scenario, my mom's got cancer. Mm -hmm. I want to move from West Virginia to UT Austin because my mom has cancer. I want to be closer to her but still play college basketball, and the, and the team wants me, mm -hmm. right? There's a guy at the NCAA that says, hey, clear your waiver. You're good to go. Right. Don't worry about it, right? Yeah. Who's the guy now that's like, yeah, my coach left? Yeah, you know, I have like no what, idea. what do you what now you got to look at? Okay, what are the shock waves that that sends across college basketball when that becomes your your hey, this is what has to happen for you to do X Y Z. Yeah, logistically, I have no idea. Like, there's so many things that don't make sense it's about above it. our pay grade. Yeah, way above my pay grade for sure. But I mean, in in terms of what you're having to deal with, let's just use common sense. Like these coaches can get a dodge, and why can't these athletes? And so there, I I understand there's logistical nightmares that go along with well, it. Well, the athletes can. I don't know wh why are you saying that. The athletes can get out of Dodge. If you, if literally, you lose are, there's literally no holds bar. You can do whatever you want. You lose your eligibility. Right no, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Hundred percent. Not anymore. Not, this, not with at the least AAC, this year. With the yeah, with, with COVID. With I'm saying I'm right saying now. conventionally. Okay, con conventionally. Yes. All right. I'm saying right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Like th this season too. Mm -hmm. Should it be waived that athletes can or can't train? Like, should athletes be able to transfer intra conference? This year, in a, right in now. In a COVID year. In, in this year, right now. In a COVID year, I'm on board with that. In okay, a COVID year. Why? Because I think COVID has lent itself to so many extenuating circumstances, and we've made exceptions for so many people that we haven't before. Like, this is a year that we will have an enormous asterisk next to for a number of reasons. I, I don't know if you put it next to the competitive aspect, but in terms of, you know, what happened with sports this year is unprecedented. We had guys declare for the draft, get an agent, and then come back. Um, we're not going to see that ever again. So in a year that's extraordinary let's have some extraordinary exceptions i don't think it's a long-term situation but with covid i mean it affects everybody so differently but why why intra-conference why should i allow you to go from wazoo mm -hmm. to washington and transfer just because there's a pandemic going mm -hmm. on because i think it's, it's student athletes right like if, if you want to be closer to your family with say your mom like you said your mom gets sick right, right, right. The, but that's different from covid how though because okay. COVID's literally an illness. My, my, okay, but my mom had my mom has cancer, uh -huh. or say that like anything that oh I need to move back home close to my family. Mm -hmm. That it, it doesn't have to be COVID related. I would assume most of them aren't COVID related. Right, and and I think th that's why I would vote yes because there's so many different scenarios that COVID then opens the box to. Just, right, like there's so many things that like we can't account for. I don't know your parents' situation. I don't know your mom's situation. I don't know what your sister has going on or what you have. I mean, but that's guys have every different year. genetic things. Right, but I think in COVID, it's like, okay, this is the one thing we know for sure is going on and for sure is impacting all of you in some way differently. How much, we don't know, but at this point, it's like, okay, call to wash, transfer where you want to transfer. It's not going to happen again, but in a COVID year, I'm like, I get it. Like, I, I can't relate to what that's like for John Jones from UCLA and what that's like for him with his you mom, You think John Jones is going to transfer? I think John Jones, he's just a clip. John Jones in the portal. No. Yep. He's in the For portal. For what? What happened to his parents? Uh, 
Car broke down. No yeah, way. Yeah, he's in the portal. He's going home. Because of COVID. <laughs> you, we just broke news. Yeah. UCLA's John Jones is in the transfer portal. Yep. Michael McDonough says uh, there are 1,232 names in the transfer portal. So I think Coach Mac. when you open it up like that, you are asking for a transfer portal that is so full that you have plenty of guys that will not find a landing spot. Yeah. If you do not regulate it in some way, and I, I think it should be regulated that you can't go within conference, even in a year like this, because if you don't regulate it, then you end up with a situation like we're in right now where there's 1,300 players or 1,200 players, and, and at least 100 of those will not find a Division One landing spot. But why, why, does, more. why does the conference variable matter so much? Because if he's not transferring to SMU, maybe he's transferring to another Texas school like North Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if it's not... But that's, that's, why, that, that's why not does the AAC. The, why does the conference deal matter so much in your mind? Like, it, like what changes me, it? It's, it's that... I don't even know if sportsmanship's the right word. It's the fact of... All right, you played this season at TCU, mm -hmm. and you scored 25 points per game, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Chris Beard just moved to Texas, and he calls, and he's like, listen, man, like, COVID's going on right now, and I, we can do whatever we want. Right. I want you to come play for me. Yeah. The and then you yeah. can jump ship from Jamie Dixon at TCU, who you signed to play basketball for. Totally. To go to Texas now, and next season, you're shooting up in the wherever TCU – I forgot their arena. I don't know. You know, playing yeah. against them in Fort Worth. Yeah, and I think that's where it becomes like this is a one-year scenario, and people will take advantage of it, right? Like people are going to take advantage <sighs> of this rule. Everyone's going to. And they, I mean, should they or shouldn't they? That's not what the rule is for, but I think you just have to open the door to everyone because there are so many circumstances that people are dealing with that literally I couldn't even fathom. Like I, don't, I wouldn't even know where to begin with what people are dealing with at this point in time. So the fact that you can just open the door and say, okay, call it a wash, there's going to be guys to take advantage of it. Like you said, probably I would say at least half people take advantage mm. of it. You're opening the door, and when you open the door, you hurt college athletes. I know what you're See, saying is what you're trying to help collegiate athletes, but you're hurting a lot of them because so many hundreds of these guys will not find Division One landing spots. And I think that's natural selection in itself, Unfor ah, unfortunately. That's the third thing you've said. I think it is, though. We're now at burning couches on Austin Avenue, punting children, and natural selection. I stand, I stand by all three of those. Oh I, I heard all those back, and they sounded just as good. But, I mean, really, if you have the chops to go play somewhere else, you'll play. If you don't... You'll have to figure it out and maybe go back to your other school. Maybe you'll have to go to a lower division. Like, those are the guys that will benefit the most. Guy's coaching D2 basketball right now, and he'll get some D1 bounce back that got left out of the portal, played a minute and a half at Texas a year ago. Nowhere to go. Sorry, no spot. So, he, like, those schools are going to benefit a lot. But I really think, like, if you have the chops, you'll, get, you'll end up somewhere. If not, you'll get burned. And that's kind of just the nature of it because you, you knew that was a possibility when you jumped into the portal and said, hey, I'm betting on myself. Sometimes when you bet on yourself, you lose. I've, I've lost a lot of myself, but, I mean, you bounce back and you play. Like, that's just the nature so, of it. But, but I feel like what you're saying is that you want to benefit college athletes, you, right? The, the, the goal of opening the portal entirely is to benefit college athletes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, so sorry, Susie, you enter the transfer portal and you're not going to make it. Yeah, and Susie doesn't have to enter the portal. Susie can stay wherever she wants. But if Susie knowingly takes the risk of entering the portal, then you got to live with the consequences. Like, we can't coddle them to the point of, okay, you definitely have a guaranteed transfer to this school and that school. And that's why coaches are involved. And that's why there's all these different people that know how to scout talent that are saying, hey, I want you on our team. I think your guys should know I that. I think you're hurting more than you're helping these guys by opening the portal the way you're opening. I think there's some self-awareness that's got to go into it. You got to know like, hey, I have a shot to go play this school, that school, and this school. Yeah. And if not, oh. then don't go into the portal. Stay, oh. stay put. The grass is not always greener. And that's why selfishness is going to burn so many of these oh, kids, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, we got Addison on the, on the uh, caller line. Hey. Oh, we got Addison we go. on the caller line. Hey, uh, Addison, what's going on? You got, a, you got a take on the transfer portal? Yeah, I got an opinion for you. <laughs> Hit me. Sweet. So I have a sister who um, was a recruiter at a D2 school. And she commonly lost players to Alabama. She was at a little D2 school in Alabama, and they would transfer to Alabama. So what is y'all's take on that, like going D2 to D1? Because, you know, some schools have to work really hard to get those players to come to them. Yeah. So mm. I, what I, is, what is take on that? <laughs> I, I'll start in saying I think that's a matter of – who do you want to benefit? Do you want to benefit the, the Division II institutions or do you want to benefit the collegiate athletes in the way you design these rules? Mm. Do, we, do we build this to help programs sustain, especially the D2 level, which I think is, is, it is different than Division I, sure. especially from a revenue standpoint with the NCAA is looking at, or do we want to, hey, let's help out these athletes that want to chase their Division I aspirations? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, completely. 
Well, I think my question, I, I truthfully don't know all the parameters around yeah. transferring from D2 to Alabama. Like, if they're having to sit out a year, then, yeah, that's just, that's the price you pay. But if you can transfer and be eligible right away, I mean, I, I don't know that I necessarily right. have a and problem with it. and I think that's my it. problem with the, like, D1 to D1 or interconference. Like, that, again, what you said about, like, sportsmanship, like, mm. it's morally, I'm not for it. But, like, I there's no rules saying that it's wrong, you know? Yeah, and I think that's why I'm against it if it's not a COVID year. Like, you can't have free agency. That's not what this is for. It's what, this, it's what we are right It's, it's what it's going to be. Right, free but I think yeah. making it okay in the COVID year is going to lead to more leniency. Mm. Interesting. I, I think so, too. Again, like Michael McDonough said that. He said it's a trial run for the NCAA. I think they're going to see this, and the NCAA is going to say, hey, trial run was great. We got, we, we're going to make money off of this. Mm-hmm. Let's just leave it. You know, mm-hmm. It hurts the institutions, but maybe it helps some athletes, and maybe it helps us make money. I think that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, Addison, right. we're, we're, the NCAA will always pick that over oh. the absolutely it's business revenue they, it's money it's a money, money game yeah. uh addison bear games question of the day um if baylor could have any player in the country transfer to play basketball for them who would you want oh boy okay well i'm an arkansas native native so i'm gonna give y'all no tay hmm. but before he sees anyone like for therapy wow yeah jd note is kind of crazy we got jd note from arkansas yeah y'all can have it we, we're taking him he wow. played well <laughs> um addison are you fighting 50 first graders or 25th graders um 50 first graders yeah yeah for wow. yeah. i just fifth graders and first graders aren't that different in size I Dude, just don't think so. You'd be surprised. There's a fifth grader well, with mustaches. Well, I'm, I'm closer to the size of Probably. a fifth grader than a first grader, so. <laughs> hey, Addison, thanks for your call. <laughs> thanks, bye. All right, we're going to hit Scott right here. Uh, Scott, you've got uh, some talks on the regulation of, uh, of the transfer portal. What's going on, Scott? Hey, yeah, so I was listening to your conversation. I think that. Uh, you know, getting too much regulation is just going to, it could be a real problem. And we've seen how some of these, you know, waivers and stuff have been in the past, especially with football players, you know, one guy moves because his mom is sick, but he actually moved further away. Uh, that didn't make right. any sense. And right. he got, and he got waiver to, you know, play immediately. And then another guy's mom is sick and he moves closer and he didn't get his waiver and he has to set out for a year. Yep. So I think, you know, putting it, putting it too much into people's hands and making it subjective, it makes it a problem. But one thought I had is what if you limited, I mean, we're talking basketball here. So what if we limited the D one programs at least, because they have all the money and all the power and all the clout. So what if we limited them to just like five a year, five transfers a year? Is that basketball? And then they've got to be really so. Five's a lot. Five feels like a lot. Florida just got their fourth. Are you, you want you like basketball limit to five? Yeah, basketball limit to five or less. It could be three, but I don't want to be too choked down. I mean, Baylor, you know, to be honest, we've really benefited from the transfer portal, and we've taken a good number, as we saw. So uh, Mm. maybe three. Maybe three is the number. But if you just made a blanket number and nobody could exceed, uh, then I think that would help a lot, personally. Wow. I think, Scott, then you got where you, you're going to have the cap in the transfer portal that, like, hey, there are only X amount of spots on Division One teams. Mm. So by the time, like, John Jones wants to transfer from UCLA, like, hey, no, we're full. Like, mm-hmm. this is the max amount of guys that can move around. Mm-hmm. So at that point, then you look at it, too, like, oh, everybody's full. I'm the last guy. There's one, like, there's one spot left at Old Dominion. I got to go to Old Dominion. Yeah. Oh, there's no good way yeah. to do this. I mean, there, there's the scholarship cap, too, which I think helps you out. Yeah. But I think one thing that we're not considering is the, the transfer portal doesn't automatically make your team better. Like you can get yeah. guys in the transfer portal, and it can hurt you. For example, if Baylor misses on Butler, misses on Chama Chachua, like if they miss on a lot of these guys, they are. I mean, they, they, they bet a lot on the transfer portal, and yeah. they won, but you can see, you see other programs bet a lot on the transfer portal, and you'll lose. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I don't necessarily have a, num- have a problem with – the activity, I have a problem with the reasons that we're allowing kids to transfer or not to transfer. Like, the adults are running the show, and I think a lot of times they're missing the mark on, on what the purpose is to have a transfer portal. Yeah. Well, I think another problem you guys were talking about, you know, not being able to transfer, not being immediately eligible, especially in conference. On one hand, I can get where you're coming from, but on the other hand, do you see that in the NBA? I mean, guys go from one week playing with a team, the next week they're playing against. Yeah. And yeah. They, you know, oh, I, I 
I kind of feel like if we're really setting these guys up and we're trying to be NBA light or, you know, the junior league, uh, we kind of, we, we, we have a hard time, I think, you know, saying, oh, well, you can transfer from ACC to Big 12, but you can't go Big 12 to Big 12, you know, and you got to sit out two years or whatever. But the other thing I was going to say is this really comes into play also on the football side of it with the transfer portal. Uh, of course, you couldn't limit it to five there, but, you know, yeah. If you want to reduce the number, I think the D2 programs, as your previous caller was talking about, leave them wide open. They can take as many as they want. Guys can find a place there because they need a lot of help, quite honestly. But if we could limit the D1 because they have so much advantage by all the contracts and the eyeballs and everything else, limit them to how many they could take a year. I think you'd see fewer and fewer guys entering the transfer portal. And uh, I don't know. I think it might regulate itself. I I think – that's a start. That's a start. Because you got amateur athletes. You want to keep that amateur in comparison to the NBA being a business. You don't want the NCAA, uh, the college programs themselves, the players. You don't want the players to be a business. Uh, we got to roll quick here, though, Scott. Uh, Baylor could have any player out of the portal. Who would it be for you? Oh, man. That's, the, I mean, Kate Cunningham, but I'm sure he's NBA bound. So, yeah. uh, man, I don't even know. I, keep, keep the guys we have. Keep, <laughs> the guys, keep yeah. it here. There you go. Uh, and if you, w- would you fight 50 first graders or 25th graders? I want the fifth graders. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a horrible question. I have kids, man. That's, <laughs> hey, that's a terrible question. Listen, we don't make the, we don't make the questions. We don't make 20, the questions. Twenty fifth graders, fifty first graders. You got you got to do something. To this. You got to you got to defend yourself here. I'll take uh, the fifth graders as long as they're Al Qaeda. Yes. Boom up top. I'll, I'll high five you because you're my friend. Fifth not graders done. Thanks for your call, Scott. Okay, bye, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Richard, I saw your call there. We're almost out of time, though. we got to roll through Dead or Alive here, Armstrong. Do we have the Dead or Alive music? All right, Dead or Alive today, number one.